The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is Aubrey McLaughlin and I am the Director of Alumni Professional Networks for the University of Maryland's Alumni Association. We're excited that you're able to join us for today's webinar, Podcasting, Building Your Brand and Your Bottom Line, presented by Doug Sandler, journalism graduate of the class of 1986. This webinar is part of the Alumni Association's Professional Development Webinar Series, in which we hope to provide thought-provoking and valuable content that will help alumni like you achieve your personal and professional goals. We have a lot of information to cover today, but we will be taking questions throughout the presentation. Feel free to submit any questions at any time using the question box located in the GoToWebinar control panel. Not only is Doug a very good friend of mine, but he is also an entrepreneur and podcast industry leader. As a host of the Nice Guys on Business podcast, Doug has interviewed Gary Vanderchuk, Ariana Huffington from HuffPost, Dan Harris from Good Morning America, Ron Klan, White House Chief of Staff, and dozens of celebrities. His book, Nice Guys Finish First, is a number one ranked Amazon bestseller. Doug is also a nationally recognized speaker, writer, and founder of Turnkey Podcast Company, providing pro podcast production, editing, and launch services. And now we will get started. Doug, take it away. All right, Aubrey, thank you so, so very much for, uh, for inviting me here. I, I love being able to present to uh, a, a, a group that is, that is near and dear to my heart from University of Maryland since uh, graduating. I don't want to say how many how many years ago, but gosh, I, is it thirty some years ago already? That's crazy. Okay, so yes, that's where I am. Uh, so um, as I am presenting, feel free, anyone that is tuned in here, please feel free to just type in any questions that you have. Uh, Aubrey will you know, will can interrupt in the middle of a sentence for me or go anywhere in here. This does not need to be such a um, a structure that I can't answer questions as we go along, especially if something pops up in your mind. Uh, as we are as we are presenting, so uh, all right, let's get uh, let's get underway. Podcasting has been something near and dear to me over the last several years since we created the Nice Guys on Business podcast. We're now uh, three plus years into our journey, nearly two million downloads of our podcast, which is incredible to think that we started at zero downloads and we're now at two million or somewhere around there, six hundred and twenty episodes in, and and loving the uh, the journey that we've that we've been on. Um, so when it when it came down to what what are we going to present about how are we going to present this we've discovered through our podcast the nice guys on business podcast and several others that we've produced over the over the last uh, few years that uh, podcasting is definitely a huge huge benefit to your brand and your bottom line and that is what I'm hoping that you are tuning in for how to build your brand using podcasting whether as a guest or even as a host of a podcast and how to build your bottom line, meaning how do you make more money? Ultimately, that's what it's about. I don't wanna just be a drain of uh, podcasting to be a drain of your resources and your time and your energy. It should be something that's got a, a measurable uh, return on investment. And if you can't increase your bottom line and your and build your brand using podcasting, then, then don't do it. So that was my feeling in, in getting into the space to begin with. So I want to talk a little bit about, um, before we get into the specifics of, of how to, I want to talk about who this lesson is not for. So if you're listening to this and you have nothing to sell, uh, you don't like selling, uh, or your company doesn't sell any products or services, um, this session is not necessarily for you. Podcasting is great as a, as a listener. Uh, but it is not, uh, I don't look at, I'm not looking at podcasting as a way to build my entertainment schedule. I want it as a way to build my bottom line and build my brand. Um, also, from a marketing perspective, you, if, you, if you think within a box, if you think in, within a specific set of guidelines, um, this probably isn't the right session for you. Podcasting is all about thinking outside the box. And I'll explain what I mean uh, about that and a little bit later as I share how we've made money and, and a lot of money in this in this particular space and really been able to to build our brand. Um, if you're somebody that is totally in tune to podcasting and you understand words like downloads and uh, and uh, guest management, um, understand that that podcasting, building a business through podcasting or building your business through podcasting is not does not equate to large audience equals a lot of money. Uh, we oftentimes will have in the podcast production business, which I own one, uh, we have many clients that have a very, very tight niche market. Uh, they're consultants. They might be, uh, they might be um, uh, um, 
leaders within a space that uh, funeral directors, HVAC people, um, uh, equities uh, folks, uh, people that are in the financial world, real estate agents that might not have a huge market. They might have a very small niche market in their specific product or service that they that they sell. And so they don't have a huge audience, but they still make big money from their from their podcast marketing. So if you feel like bigger audience equals more money, not necessarily the case. So downloads don't equal dollars in this case. If you can learn to check your ego at the door and not feel like it's just all about you, 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 by having a podcast, you're getting your message out to the world, you're putting your brand out there to the world. It really is about sharing your content uh, with those that are in your audience. And that might mean bringing guests on your show, if you're a host, bringing guests on your show that actually have a great message also. And if you're just comp continuing to compete with your, your guest for who's got the, you know, who's got the better message, then, uh, then you're not going to succeed in the podcasting world. So you have to learn to check your ego at the door. Even as a guest, when you're invited on somebody else's show, you have to learn to have a conversation with somebody where you're able to understand, relate, uh, be empathetic, be compassionate, show gratitude to the people that you're, that you're sharing your message with because they're the ones that are going to really promote your, your, uh, your message. And if you feel like podcasting is broadcasting, this session isn't for you necessarily. If you feel as though um, old school radio, TV, even cable TV, the more the merrier, um, that, is, uh, that is an approach that we don't take. It's not just about bringing more ears to your, your message. It's about bringing the right ears to your message. So that's why we feel podcasting is more of a, of a narrow cast of your, of your message. Uh, just to give you a little bit of my background, I spent the last 30 years, believe it or not, 30 years since I actually I started at the University of Maryland, uh, at the uh, at the Holiday Inn up at uh, Route One at, uh, at 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 the Beltway, uh, at a at a restaurant called the Straw Boss. It was a bar I filled in for my a colleague of mine as a DJ. So I've spent the last 30 years um, building my my um, my business experience as a guy that started out as a DJ, running into a into the DJ business, thousands and that literally 3,000 jobs to my own side. So I've done 3,000. Uh, parties as a as an MC and a DJ and uh, and built a company. We do anywhere between seven and nine and nine hundred functions a year. Even currently, we are still doing a, a, a huge amount of of DJ business. Um, but that was um, part of what I think helped me just understand the entire business side of things. It's not just about uh, being great and being a rock star at what you do, but it's understanding the the business side of things as well. Um, then a handful of years ago, I decided, hey, there may be something more to life than doing the cha-cha slide and the electric slide out on the uh, dance floor. There may be something that, uh, that my life was, was meant to be, be above and beyond the entertainment business. So a handful of years ago, I met with my financial planner. We discussed a plan in which to promote the business experience that I've accumulated over all those years, turn it into a consulting business and promote that to, uh, to people that were interested in starting their own businesses or running their own businesses. So what came as a result of that is I saw the speaker in uh, 2015, uh, uh, probably no, it was 2013 actually. Uh, his name was Ryan Estes and he was speaking about the topic of change and change management. And we talked about at the end of his presentation about how to get into the professional speaking business. As a result of, of, uh, of meeting Ryan and starting to do some professional speaking, uh, I thought that the best way for me to present my message was in this new media space, new media space being blogging, or podcasting, or email campaigns, social media, that's all the new media space. So I went to a buddy of mine and said, I have a great idea. This is about a year or two after I started my speaking business. And I said, I'd love to be able to uh, promote my message, but I don't want to rely upon the traditional means uh, of, of an agency, a publicist, a PR company. I wanted to be able to promote it on my own. So we thought of the idea of coming up with a, uh, with a podcast. Uh, in order to promote some of the things that I had in my life at the time, which was a speaking business, um, I wrote this book called uh, Nice Guys Finish First. Um, in order to promote those, we, uh, we came up with this idea of coming up with a podcast called the Nice Guys on Business Podcast to continue this Nice Guys brand. And um, we were going along pretty good. We, uh, we had about 100 and some odd episodes. We had about 20,000 downloads. This was about 15 or 16 months into our run. 
uh, we were named uh, by Inc. Magazine, a featured podcast, 12 podcasts that would make you a better leader. Uh, uh, we were ranked by Inc. Magazine as uh, as the number three podcast worthy of binge listening to. Uh, we were about, like I said, 20,000 downloads and about a year in, about two years in, we were about a million downloads into our journey. Uh, I had a best-selling book, The Nice Guys, I, the, uh, uh, nice Guys Finished First. I was writing for HuffPost. I was doing all of these great things, um, but there was one problem. I wasn't making any money. I wasn't understanding the importance of of um, of what all of these uh, tools that I had in my hands were. I was just creating content. I was just creating marketing pieces. I was just out there promoting, 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 and that really wasn't wasn't helping. Um, it wasn't making me any money. I needed to figure out what was it that my audience actually wanted from me. So we did a couple of things. We started taking the focus just off of building our audience and throwing content out to the world. And we started focusing on the money-making aspect of what this podcast could possibly, could possibly do for us. When I understood, when I started to really get into the numbers, and I think we have a poll that, that uh, Aubrey is gonna share with everybody right after this slide. But when I started to understand the facts about podcasting and what it actually could do for us, it was really interesting. 40% of Americans over the age of 12 have listened to a podcast. 93 million, and this number I think I believe is a 2017 number. I think it's over 100 million now. 100 million people listen to podcasts every month. 42 million of them, I think that number is again over 50 million now, listen to them on a weekly basis. And this was the part, this last one, this last line item, was the thing that I really thought it was was uh, incredible for me to realize this, that the, the 20 or 30 minute shows that we were putting out two or three days a week at that point. 85% of the people that are listening to our show would listen to all or most of the podcasts that they tuned into. That means that you have 20 to 30 minutes of time that you're going to have a, uh, a, a an ear that is tuning into the message and the content that you are providing. So um, just to get a level of experience, uh, Aubrey, I think that, the, is this the time for, for that first poll that we have? Yes, and I'm right about to launch it right now. Okay, great. So what it, can you, are you going to read the question or is it going to just pop up on their screen? Um, it should pop up right now. It is how many podcast episodes do you listen to each week? And you can select one of the following. So zero, one to five, six to 10, or 10 plus. We're collecting right. the data. Yeah, I'm curious what this is. I mean, it's, it's very interesting. I, I mean, I think back to it. Uh, Dobby, do you listen to do you listen to podcasts yourself? Um, sometimes, but not very frequently. I need to do a better job at that. <laughs> you, you know, what's interesting? That's okay. What's interesting about it is there are people that do listen uh, more frequently than others. There are, are there are people that listen to like uh, S Town or This American Life. They like the entertainment value of it. And there's there's people like me that use their car is their university on wheels. So I might listen to the Tim Ferriss show. I might get my news from the daily, which is Michael Barbaro show. Uh, there are so many different shows that are out there. Five minute success. Um, uh, think business with John Dwoskin. I mean, a number of different shows that are, that are out there. Um, it's just amazing that we take this time for granted that we have in the car. I mean, we, we listen to the radio or maybe we, we talk on the phone or maybe we are doing things like we shouldn't be doing like text messaging, but I'll tell you when you're, when you're driving, turn your car into a university on wheels. And a lot of our listeners we have found that's when they tune into us. So that's why we created this format. That's 20 to 30 minutes, which is pretty typical of the average commute in many places in this country. So how do we do on the poll? So poll, we had about 92% of the people on the webinar um, participated in the poll. So thank you guys for doing that. 37% um, of our listeners right now um, have not, uh, don't listen to any podcasts each week. Um, wow, okay. A little less than half, about 49% listen to one to five, 6% listen to six to 10, and 9% wow. listen to over 10 every week. So there are a number of people, so what I'm taking from that is there are a number of people that have never even tuned in or don't tune in on any regular basis. And what I would encourage you to do, whether you have an, an Apple or, or, or something inferior as <laughs> part of your equipment, um, what I would say is just get onto iTunes or get, on, get into Stitcher is another podcast platform that's out there, or just go to Google. Type in, the, type in the industry that you're in. So if you're in uh, insurance or you're in real estate or you're in... It doesn't matter what you're in. 
whatever your, your field is, type in those words. So if it's customer service, type in customer service and then put the word podcast after that. What is so amazing is no matter what subject that you put in, chances are very, very good that probably is a, uh, a podcast that is, um, that is about that subject. So speaking to the, what was the number that had never listened to a podcast before, Aubrey? Uh, 37%. So for the 37% of you that are, that are tuning in, uh, and for some reason my slide isn't advancing, but here basically is the, is the slide. The question is, do you know what a podcast is? So if you don't know what a podcast is, and, I, and I'm not laughing at you, I, it just because I'm so immersed in this field that I'm, I'm always interested in finding out why, why somebody has not tuned, oh, there we go, why somebody hasn't tuned into a podcast yet. A podcast is simply a digital audio file that's made available on the internet for downloading uh, to your computer or a portable media player like a smartphone at any time. So it's on demand. The nice part about that is that my message, which we create now, we are doing five episodes a week of our show. Um, when we do our show, our message can be listened to at any point. So even if I have a, a fan in our audience or a listener or somebody that would be considered a, a community member of ours, our nice guy community members, if they miss a week, they can always go back and listen or they can skip episodes and go back. I mean, the uh, the creation of a company like Netflix, the reason that Netflix is so popular is because the shows are on demand. You can get them when you want. You can read the title or the show notes and decide on your own whether you want to listen to this or not. It's not uh, necessarily a um, the beauty of the way that we podcast is it's not a uh, a story that you have to follow in order. You can pick up the ball at any point. Because we are an interview-based interview show, uh, people can listen to an interview today and they can go back a week from now and they won't miss any information because it's not based upon the information that they've learned today from the podcast. So you can skip around at any, anywhere that you want to go. So that is, uh, that's what a podcast is. Podcasting really does fit into this space that I call the new media marketing space. What new media marketing is all about, it's it's about podcasting, it's about webinars, it's about um, social media, it's about blogging, it's about videos, uh, Vimeo and YouTube, it's about email blasts and email campaigns. If your company is not a part of, or your organization, even if you're an association listening to this, um, this webinar, if you're an association, it can be about, not just about making money from your podcast, but it could be about, um, educating your membership. It could be about uh, creating an additional revenue source or an additional income stream for your, uh, for your association by selling advertising or sponsorship to your podcast. It could be about um, recruitment of new members. Uh, because remember, you're not the only one that's typed in, um, um, what, let's say that you're in the real estate business. You can type in real estate association uh, and you'll be able to find a podcast. That's how people are finding our show. That's how people are finding podcasts um, in general. So that's everything with the new media space. So why the new media? Well, it's pretty simple. This is where everybody is now. I mean, if you if you think about it, there's tens of millions of downloads of YouTube every day. If your podcast is launched on a on a uh, on a platform like iTunes. Uh, they also are distributing it through YouTube and through various other channels. Um, they can find all of your content. If you feel like you've created this blog and you want to create an audio version of your blog, you can do that through the uh, through the podcasting space as well. If you're somebody that just wants to promote your products as a guest, you can create content and go onto people's people's podcasts. So again, why new media? It's because that's where everybody is today. It's not about um, uh, radio advertising, radio, TV. Unfortunately, if you're in that industry, it is a dying industry. And I don't have to tell you that. You already know that. People are heading away from traditional broadcasting and advertising sources, and they're going to promote their products and services through organizations and through channels like social media, podcasting, and blogging. So why not take your message to where it's, uh, it's being heard? So how do you get started in the podcasting space? Well, it's it could be just a matter of a few things. Um, one, you really need to come up with a podcasting strategy. A strategy can be uh, pretty simple. It could be something uh, like sitting down with someone that's either familiar with the podcasting space like us, 
or just having a conversation with, with somebody that is a coach or consultant with you and sharing with them the ideas that you have and how you can use podcasting as either a host, meaning have your own show, uh, or as a guest, meaning getting on other people's podcasts. If you have no experience with the podcasting space, what I would suggest is first go on to a few podcasts. How do you find which podcast would be good for you? The same exercise that we did earlier, all you need to do is type in the industry that you're in, real estate, type in the word podcasting. You'll probably have 50 different podcasts that come up. Uh, these hosts want you on their show. The beauty of being a guest on a podcast um, uh, that you find on your own and not through a placement service is that it's free. You're going to reach out to the host. You're going to have a communication. Uh, you're going to exchange messages with the host. You're dealing directly oftentimes uh, with the person that is going to actually put you on their show. You're not many times, most of the time, you're not dealing with NPR and you're not dealing with Gimlet or you're not dealing with a very large organization. You're dealing with the host. Most podcasts are very grassroots. Uh, our show is grassroots, even though we're uh, 2 million downloads roughly in and 600 and some odd episodes in. We do have a process by which we put our guests through or our potential guests through. But most of the time, the people are dealing directly with me or one of my team members that is that is representing me. And it's a very easy conversation to have. So I would encourage you, if you've never been on a podcast before or never, if you don't listen to podcasts, but thinking about using it as a um as a potential tool to promote your products or services, then I would say um, just reach out directly to any of those hosts. And that information um, can be found just by Googling that podcast or that industry that you're looking for. As a host, it's slightly different. As a host, you're, you're taking the entire ball of wax and you're putting it together. You have to understand, again, it's not a challenging process, it's just a different process. You have, you're gonna create a show, you're gonna go from concept to launch, and then you're gonna create a season of podcast episodes. Some people use podcasting as a host um, for just a specific set of um, launches that they're doing. For example, you have a new product launch and you wanna put out 10, 10 episodes of a specific um, topic, subject, and, uh, and you want to release that as a host. As, um, as a guest, uh, a little bit easier in that all you're doing basically is you're connecting with the host of the show. From an equipment perspective, again, pretty easy. Um, it's and not very expensive either. I've spent the last three years or uh, three plus years as a host of, of the uh, Nice Guys on Business podcast. And I probably have spent less than $500 total over the last three years in, uh, in equipment. That would be a microphone uh, the wiring, the software, apps, the all of the stuff that you need to, to put this together. On the left-hand side of the screen right now, uh, everything that's in the lighter green or lighter blue, that's all of the stuff that you would need um, as, a, uh, as, a, as a host. So the boom stand, the shock mount, the shock mount, the microphones, the Yeti shield, everything that is on that left-hand side you're gonna use as a, um, as a host. Uh, if you're looking at the left-hand side, the darker blue, the, the darker blue is what you would need to buy if you uh, were going to be a guest on other people's shows. You need, and again, the, you could probably even do it for less expensive. I just, when it, my, my guests come on our show, uh, what we try to encourage them to do is you want to sound as professional as you possibly can so that anybody that's tuning in is not going to tune out because of the quality of the sound that they have coming through the um, their speakers in their car or on their smartphone. So in order to do that, um, those three darkened items on the left-hand side, the Blue Yeti microphone, which is about 150 bucks, um, the Yeti shield, which is just a little filter to help you you know, sound better, and then headphones. And all together, you could spend through two to 300 bucks for the, um, for the stuff that you would need in order to, to, uh, to be a guest on a podcast. Doug, um, Audrey, sorry, any, yeah, a quick yeah, question yeah. for you that came through, um, actually two of them. So we talked about the equipment. Um, how do you connect into an established network or channel? So I'm assuming that you mean uh, like a larger group of other podcasts that are out there that have created a network. I'm I'll, I'll go with the assumption right, that right. that's what that what that question is asking. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of different networks. So um, a, an organization like NPR, unless you're an NPR produced show, they're not going to have you on their network. But there are many networks like, uh, give you an example, the C-suite radio network or, or Entrepreneur has their own network. What you need to do is reach out to the network itself. Oftentimes what they're looking for is an already established show so that um, so that they can take they're, they're looking to create or provide content to their audience. 
So those audiences might be, let's say, with uh, C-Suite Radio. C-Suite Radio Network is about 50 shows that, that make up um, their network, and they all have messages that would appeal to the C-Suite listening audience. So what I would do if I was somebody that had a show that was interested in, in a, having my show appear on their network is, um, is reach out to the administrator of that network. Um, what you need to do, though, is you need to ask yourself the question, what is the goal of my podcast? Is the goal of my podcast to reach a, a bigger audience? Is the goal of my podcast to, to promote my message? Is the goal of my, of my podcast to blast my brand? Is the goal of my podcast to make money? Once you do that, once you figure out what the goal of your podcast is, it may be that a network is not necessarily the approach to take. Um, and it, do you want to ask the second question or before I get into this, because I can, sure. um, the, 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 the topic that you're, we're heading into is one that, that probably will answer the network question a little bit better in the goal question, oh, but let's perfect. answer the second one first. So. so while I'm asking this, this next question, we did have a user who is interested in, in seeing the equipment slide again, if we can go back to that. Sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. Let's, but I do go. have a, I do have a, an individual who, um, has her own show, and um, they cover a lot of different subjects like environment, history, cooking, gardening, politics. Nice. Not necessarily nice. her message, but they have a lot of great right. guests. And um, do you believe in different brands for different subjects in terms of just a strategy for your podcast? Man, that is that is probably that's the that's probably one of the the most popular questions that we get. I have a, a, a myriad of knowledge and wisdom in my head. I'm saying this from a non ego perspective. I have a lot of stuff that's in my head, and I have I don't have a a specific message about one particular brand. I have all of these messages. How can I how can I should I have five different podcasts for for each of these different subjects? What I would say is let's come back to the goal of your show. If the goal of your show is to create this amazing content uh, and you want to promote that beyond your podcast, I would say it really doesn't matter if you have five or six different subjects. We talk about in one in one episode, we'll talk about uh, health and wellness. On another episode, we'll talk about uh, real estate. On another episode, we'll talk about uh, building a business model or building a business plan. Um, because we take the, that content that's on our podcast and we chop it up into little bits, we take that content and then promote it on social media and engage that specific segment of our market for just that message. So I won't go out to, if we have somebody that's really uh, big in automotive that's on our show and we're talking all about Teslas and, and battery powered cars and, and all of that, I won't necessarily promote that message to the people that I would promote my message about uh, proper real estate investments. So we can still do that on the Nice Guys on Business podcast. When I go to the promotion of that episode, though, I very, very fine tune using Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Facebook. Um, I can fine tune my audience with that specific with that specific message. Does that does that answer that question? Do you think, Aubrey? I think so. Yes. If it does not, I'll I'll um, come back to yeah, it we'll and have a little bit more. Yep. Yeah. So um, I left this, the, the follow-up slide on there. By the way, if any of these slides, if anybody is interested in getting more information, I know these look like they are clickable, and they are clickable on my presentation, but on the webinar, they're not clickable. So if anybody wants that slide, I'll have my contact information at the end. Um, or I'm happy to, uh, same, set up a, a phone call with somebody that is just interested in finding out more. There's no charge for the phone call. I just obviously want to help you get to the point where you're understanding what you have your hands on. All right, let's move on. So um, I, I keep coming back to this question of the, the what's the goal of your podcast, because oftentimes it really will determine uh, the direction and whether you want to be on a network, whether you want to promote on social media, whether you are uh, whether you care about the size of your audience or not, because traditionally. When I talk about how do you make money from your podcast, most people, and if the, for those that are that are podcasters that are out there that that, have, that host their own show right now, the traditional monetization tools are advertising, sponsorship, affiliation, meaning that you get a piece of everything that is sold through a a link on your show that your show's name is tied back to. So you put a link in your show notes, and your audience clicks on that, they buy a product, and you get a percentage of that. Um, call to action, which is selling services and donations. So those five ways are traditionally the ways that most podcasters are making money as hosts. The issue with that, the old school way, is that 99.9% .9 of podcasters that have a show are not doing any of those five things successfully. So they're not making any money. They're not making enough money 
to to uh, uh, have a lifestyle, and they possibly, probably are not even making enough money to uh, even pay for the production or even that uh, uh, early uh, equipment startup. So that was our motivation. We were thinking, we were tired, remember 20, uh, 17 months into this thing, 20,000 downloads, we were tired of not making money. And the reason we weren't making money was because we still had our ladder up on this wall, the traditional monetization wall. And we discovered very quickly that we just, we weren't, it wasn't that we weren't enthusiastic, it wasn't that we weren't doing a good job with our podcast, but we don't know anything about how to sell advertising, sponsorship, affiliation, uh, or, or donations for that matter. We know how to sell our own services, but we were asking our audience to take action based upon the message that we were putting out to the world. And when you rely upon somebody else's behavior to dictate how much income you make, um, that wasn't working for us. So for us, our ladder was up on the wrong wall. So we needed, a, we needed a right wall, we needed a correct wall. We needed a wall that would rely upon only our behavior. We needed some flexibility so that we could change on the fly so that if we had today, we were talking to, to hit that point earlier. If today we're talking about automotive and tomorrow we're talking about um, investment opportunities and the next day we're talking about real estate and the next day we're talking about whatever we're talking about, we wanted to be able to change our message on the fly. We also wanted something that was predictable and relationship-based because we felt like that was our strength, that we were great at building relationships. We just weren't any good at selling advertising for our show. We also knew that me as a professional speaker, because remember, as I go back to that story, uh, when I was with my financial planner, the thing that we decided, discovered that I was going to do is take the knowledge that I had from building a business over the last 30 years and we were going to put it into uh, into consulting services. And I didn't want to sell those consulting services for 200 bucks. I was going to be out there with a ticket that was going to, a with a product that was going to, that I was going to charge my customers between five and $15,000 for. So I needed something that, uh, imagine trying to sell a $15,000 ticket item to someone that's in your audience. There's a lot of smaller steps that you could have to take. And I didn't want to wait for those smaller steps. I had been 17 months into it and we weren't selling any of those. So I was thinking I'm doing something wrong. Um, I needed something that was duplicatable and trainable because I didn't want to have to do all of this all the time just by myself. I needed a team to be able to help me. I wanted something that would work for anyone and we were tired of, of not making any money. So what we did was we got into understanding that it was not about the traditional advertising sponsorship, affiliation, calls to action, and donations. It was about turning our guests, the people that came into our show as a host, again, two ways that you can look at this as a guest or as a host, but as a host, I was looking at how do I convert the people that are coming onto my show to create the perfect avatar for them to actually buy the products and services that I had. So even without an audience, the nice guys on business, and we had a good audience, but even without an audience, I wanted to be able to take people that potentially could buy my services for sales training, customer service training, speaking, uh, my book, my online training program, anything that I had to be able to, to offer. I wanted to, instead of focusing on my audience, I wanted to start focusing on my guest. So in our world, the Nice Guys on Business podcast, guest equals client for us. Fortunately, over the last three years, we've grown this um, the, um, the podcast to the point where at some point when you're growing a podcast, you're going to start to have this demand for people to be in your guest seat. Early on, you're going to do a lot of outbound marketing for that to fill that guest seat. As you get six months, a year, we went from 17, we went from 20,000 downloads after 17 months to the next 20, the next 17 months. So at three, at the three year mark, we went to 1.5 million downloads, not because we focused on our audience growth, but because we focused on our guest growth. We focused on bringing quality guests onto the show that had a great story, that had a great message, that had great reach with their social media, and that, here's the kicker, the best part about it, and that had the, the capability and the desire, possibly, to buy the products and the services that we offered. Remember, five to $15,000. So we started focusing just on building our guest management tool. When we did that, we created a six-figure income that in 2019, or by, probably by the end of 2018, will be a seven-figure income because we started focusing on not our audience growth, but our guest management tools. 
So when I look at that, I'm like, okay, well, I can do that as a host. I can also, as a guest, I can also share not only my information and my experience with the audience of that podcast host that's out there, but why not look at your podcast host as a potential for somebody that could buy the products and services that you offer as well. So as a guest, your reach is their audience. Your reach is them. As a host, your reach can be your guest. It can also be your audience too. It just depends on the strategy. So again, the idea how to move forward is, it, Aubrey, I think again, do we have another poll that we're doing here? Yes, we do. So let me launch that right now. Great. So as as uh, Aubrey launches the poll, so let me explain what the what the purpose of this of this next one is. This is the guest or the host poll, correct? Yes. So I'm interested in, and you can select all that apply. So the options are being a podcast host, being a podcast guest, being both a host and a guest, just listening to podcasts, or none of the above. Okay. Great. So. So the idea behind this poll is at some point you are tuning into this podcast, this, this webinar, because the, the, uh, the world of podcasting is a curiosity to you. For those 37% that have never tuned into or don't regularly tune into a podcast, for many of you, what I would suggest is look at the opportunity to be a guest on a show. If nothing else that you get out of this, just take those words, the industry that you're in, put the word podcast at the end of it. Uh, do a little bit of our, uh, you know, research and development on your own. Reach out to those hosts. Again, I'm happy to share some tricks of the trade over the last couple of years that uh, that works for me as a podcast um, host to receive a guest. What's a good way to to, uh, to pitch your product or service to a podcast host so that they'll want to see you? You certainly don't want to just puke product and tell them all about how great you are. You want to you want to listen to their show. You want to rate and review their show. So if you want help. Uh, again, just make a uh, just make a call to me and or send me an email, and I'll be happy to uh, happy to help. So the action items moving forward is decide to get oh, so, in pod at pod. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Doug, I'm just going to share the responses here really quickly. Um, yeah, sure. We have 75% of our audience that is interested in being both a host and a guest, um, which is okay. great. And then um, the next one, 39% are interested in just listening to podcasts. Um, and the rest of them um, are, are split between being a podcast host uh, or just being a guest or none of the above. So um, a lot of people who are interested in hosting and being a guest, which is great. Well, interestingly enough, uh, even as a guy that has a, a huge amount of podcast experience, even three years of experience is, is almost a, almost a pioneer in this space because it is so it's so new or it's it's actually extremely uh, growing extremely fast. Um, I would suggest, yeah, the, the being the the host and the guest, I still go on podcasts all the time. I probably go on a handful of them every month because I, it is a, a valuable way for me to grow not only my audience, but grow my reach in uh, in helping people understand what it is that we do, whether it's our podcast production business, which is uh, something that we own, Turnkey Podcast, or uh, my professional speaking business as a guy that talks about customer service or sales training. Um, or my online um, my online training program or my books. I mean, though that it's a great great tool. And like I said before, it is a uh, it's a free it's a free thing to uh, to do. Um, so uh, decide to get involved in podcasting at some level. So for those people that that percentage that said, hey, I want to be a guest and a host, make the decision. You know, I think that part of the 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 issue that most people have is they just don't get involved because they don't understand what's involved, they don't, it's just the, the research and the investigation, the, the DIY side of things, just you know, the, the 38 easiest steps to get started with podcasting is just overwhelming. So, but there are several shorter steps along the way that you can go through to get yourself on as a guest or to get yourself started as a, uh, as a host as well. Um, whether it's through a coach or whether you just research it on your own and DIY develop a strategy, uh, you, you know, you don't uh, put out a marketing plan and just say, if I send this one email, if I don't get any responses, I guess it failed. Well, we all know that you're not going to get many responses after going on one podcast. You have to do it consistently over a period of time to uh, to get results. As a host, 17 months in, 20,000 downloads, zero dollars. How many people would have quit? And what I tell you is the the we just had to pivot. We had to make it a a, a goal of ours to figure out what it's going to take to get beyond this zero dollar thing and to build our audience and our guest management tool as well. And so we figured that out that next 17 months was, uh, you know, from month 18 to month 36 was incredible. 
Um, determine the uh, the format, style, and launching plan of if uh, if you're hosting a podcast. So if you want to discover if you're going to do a a monologue type show where you're just sharing your message and content with the world, do you want to do an interview based show? Uh, do you want to do a combination of both? Is it going to be um, more of a structured style? Uh, the Nice Guys on Business podcast is a very very conversational style show and um, and a lot of fun to uh, to create and produce as well. We do very very little editing, so uh, you don't have to worry about that. If you um, if you have a show that um, that's more of a conversation, um, then you come up with a launch plan. Typically, to launch a show as a uh, as a host, you're going to spend uh, about 60 to 90 days putting it together. You probably can do it in two days if you dedicate your your energy and resources to it. But most people to do the the steps that are required, you need to find a host, you need to register it with iTunes, you need to create your your episode, uh, your cover art, your uh, your show note template. There's a number of steps that are involved and it probably is the 38 steps to creating your own DIY podcast. Um, or you can do something like hire a professional company like ours that does stuff like that. Um, so determine your format style and launch plan for uh, creating, creating a show. Uh, launch and then promote, promote, promote. It's not just putting the content out. Um, I can tell you from firsthand experience that writing a book is uh, 20 percent marketing or 20 percent writing 80 percent marketing the only reason that my book has done as well as it as it has is because we promoted it every possible uh, opportunity whether it's on my show through my website through social media outreach it is all about promotion 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 and backing that up with some more promotions um, and you have to do an analysis so the, the fifth step is follow analytics and determine what is and what isn't working if you um, we have a um, uh, we have a, a social promo, uh, a, a social post that we put out there that is, um, uh, it's on Twitter and it says something like, our podcast needs your lips. And it is a picture of uh, a red red lipstick and a woman. And, uh, and for us, that appeals to a huge cross section of people that are out there. We don't know why that post works so well, but we worked on probably 10 or 15 different posts to try to draw guests to our show. And we had to discover and decide that, okay, it's a little bit risque, but um, it's it's not inappropriate. And it is something that fits the style and character of our show. And so those that particular post, our show needs your lips on our podcast to, um, uh, to draw people into our show. Some people might think it's offensive and that's fine. And those people are not necessarily the ones that were looking, because our show is, ex uh, is explicit content, uh, and because our show is very, very relaxed and conversational, some people might be turned off to that because they want more structure. If somebody says to me ahead of time, what are the, give me the 10 questions that you're going to ask so that I can study it. I automatically know that that's not going to be, you know, the guest that I, uh, that I necessarily want on my, uh, on my podcast. Um, so let's move on to the next one. I think my, my slide is stuck again, but that's okay. So any questions that have come up, Aubrey, so far? Uh, not right now, no. So we are question free. All right. Okay, cool. So uh, obviously the answer to the poll is what's next. You know, you have to figure out if you're um, if you're somebody that is interested in becoming a um, a host of a show or a guest, and that probably is the um, is the best way to uh, to accomplish what you want to do. I would say if you have not, again, just to just to reemphasize, if you have not gone on any podcasts um, ever. I would say the first thing that you want to do probably um, is be a guest on a show and uh, and see if that fits. You'll get a good a good gauge for uh, for the type of format that you like, whether you like a conversational format or you, whether you want something that is um, a little bit more structured. Um, but um, I would say being a guest is probably the um, the way to start. Um, the slides are stuck here, so I'll just share with you my uh, my my contact we just, info. We just had a question that came in. Um, recently sure. started a podcast and have two episodes so far. Uh, wants to create three episodes and maybe queue them uh, before mass promoting on Twitter, Instagram, uh, and a website. But any thoughts to that? This person is um, still in college. They're a senior, actually. So the question is, like, what's the next step? Yeah, so they have done two episodes so far, want to create a third um, and and start to use them as mass promotion on social media. Um, Got it. Any thoughts to that? Yep. So here's what I would tell you. If you have a podcast or you're putting one or you're brand new to putting one out or you're thinking about putting one out, the key to a successful podcast above and beyond anything else is consistency. So if you're using it as a as a 
um, as a lead generator or as a content booster or as a content promoter, the best way for you to do that is if you say, I'm going to put out a podcast, it's going to come out once a week. It's going to come out once every other week on Tuesdays. It's going to come out once a month on the 15th of the month. Whatever it is, that's what you need to stick to. So put out a couple of episodes, but continue putting them out, put it, putting them out regularly. Use the content on social media to, uh, because what you're, what you're ultimately trying to do is you're trying to draw people to a specific action. You know, you're trying to get them to do something. So if you put content out there on the internet, uh, on social media, people want, they want more of it. They want to, they want you. It sounds like you're providing free content, create a lot of free content, put it out there, put it out on a consistent basis, uh, put it out on social media, um, using the appropriate channels, whether it's Instagram, you want to make sure you have a lot of great photos. If it's, you know, if it's Twitter, you want to make sure that it's not, I wouldn't use all 280 characters, use 140 characters, maybe use 50 characters, uh, throw in a good picture. Um, you can recycle your content by putting different pictures with uh, that have the same length that draw back to uh, your your podcast episode. So I would say you're in the right spot. Uh, continue promoting on social media. Continue promoting a lot on social media, uh, but chop up the the content so that it's relevant relevant to the to the market that you're trying to reach. So if you're trying to reach uh, a millennial market, make sure that the message that you're putting out is specific to millennials, and don't put out a message that is for baby boomers. Uh, to your millennial market because your millennial market is going to say, what the heck, I'm, why am I even listening to this? So make sure it's relevant content and, and promote, promote, promote on social media. I agree with that. Uh, and then there's another question that came through. Um, are there fees to uh, being a part of a podcast network? And what about using Facebook Live as a podcast platform? Sure. Well, there are there. So let me answer the first one. Uh, the, some networks do charge a fee. Some charge a, a substantial fee. There are there are many networks that will charge thousands of dollars a year to be a part of their network because they're giving you um, access to their to their network of of listeners, uh, which is good and bad. You know, you're 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 being given access to a specific segment of the population. Um, it's bad because if they decide to change the rules again or they ch decide to up their, their fees, you're either stuck with paying their higher fee or you have to leave their network, which will in turn potentially lose, uh, lose that, that audience for you. Um, so, uh, but there are some networks uh, that, are, that are free. You, know, you can post onto YouTube right now and there is, there is absolutely no cost to post your podcast episodes to YouTube. Uh, it just depends on how people are going to be searching for you. Um, as far as using uh, Facebook Live, yeah, I mean, if you, if you have a message that appeals to a Facebook Live audience and you have a community that's already built on Facebook, um, there's no reason that you can't use your content both on Facebook Live and then create the uh, using the audio from that Facebook Live message, uh, create an audio podcast. I would tell you that the majority of podcasts that are extremely popular um, are ones that are audio only because most people are listening to your podcast. They're not watching your podcast. They're not watching it. Um, as they are driving their car, certainly, and they, they may be watching it at home, but the majority of people that are listening to your podcast are listening on their smartphones. Uh, they might be listening during their commute, and, um, and audio only is, the, uh, is probably the best way for you to go. And then one more question uh, came through as well. Um, should, uh, should I be using Libsyn or subscribe to individual outlets? Okay, a good question again. So just so everybody knows, uh, there's a couple components that you need. You need a host to, uh, to send your content to, and then you need a distribution channel that will, that will carry your podcast. So the host, like Libsyn, Libsyn is a host, the host is where you upload all of your, your episodes. So that would include your, uh, not only your, your, uh, your audio recording, but it will also include um, the, uh, the cover art, all of your show notes and uh, and everything you know the the intro the outro the voiceover everything is is going to be collected um, in a recording and then it's going to be uploaded to the host which is Libsyn. Libsyn fortunately has um, has access to a number of distribution channels. So if you're hosting to Libsyn uh, and you have an account already set up with iTunes, uh, Libsyn will take care of distributing it through iTunes through I think iHeartRadio to YouTube, I think LinkedIn Publish. There's a number of different uh, avenues and distribution channels that, um, that Libsyn will give you, as the host, will give you access to. Libsyn is relatively inexpensive. I think they have, um, I think they have subscription plans that start around five bucks. 
uh, if you uh, a month. And if you go, uh, if you have a lot of content that you're putting out there, the, they charge more for for uh, for larger files. So I think that you could spend seventy five dollars is the absolute high end of what you could spend if you have an individual show with them. Um, but it does all come back to what is that ultimate goal of your show? Ultimately, if the goal of your show is to put out content to, to turn guests into clients, um, the distribution channel is far less important than if your goal is to reach as many people as you possibly can. Again, if you go back to the traditional advertising, the traditional monetization tools, advertising, sponsorship, affiliations, calls to action and, and donations, um, a bigger audience is a better audience. Um, we have found that extremely ineffective way to build a business through your podcast because it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of energy, and it takes learning products and services that, like advertising and sponsorship and affiliation, that you have no idea. I mean, why le you're learning another person's business in addition to learning your business as well. I hope that answers that question in, in a long-winded way. Perfect. Then we are now question-free. All right, great. So I think my slides, I think they started working again. So um, the easiest way to reach us, we own a, uh, a, a concept to launch uh, production company. So um, if there's any pitch, it's right here. And it is simply, we go from concept to launch with people 30 to 60 days, or actually as, mu as much as 90 days, depending on if you, if you need extra time to, to put work together. But usually 30 to 60 days to launch a podcast uh, we can go through all of the costs and all of that when we talk. I mean, it really does vary based upon the amount of time and uh, and services that you want from us. Um, but we will help you develop the concept, uh, which is one of the steps. We'll help you develop the strategy, how to get there. Uh, we'll help you to develop the all of the relationships with um, with the the technical side of things. We'll help you with the equipment. We'll help establish the relationships with companies like Libsyn and iTunes and the distribution channel. Uh, we'll share with you. And that's funny. It says turnkeypodcast.com, C-O-N. It's actually .com. So I don't want to be a con. <laughs> it is .com. So if, you, if you're looking at that, it's turnkeypodcast.com, C-O-N. Um, so we'll help you go through the entire process, concept to launch. Beyond the launch, uh, we can help you either teach you how to produce your own episode, meaning how to edit each episode uh, that, you're, that you get into. Uh, but some people don't want to do that. So we handle the, uh, the, the production of it as well. If on the other side of things that you want to become a guest and develop a strategy, a, a effective guest strategies as a guest on a show, uh, I am more than happy uh, on an hourly basis to um, to coach you through how to, to how to be an effective guest. Uh, we have coaching packages that start at one call. We have them in blocks of four, so we have plenty of clients that that hire me uh, just to do a month's worth of calls while they get their guesting attire and gear all together and they just want help in putting that all together um, uh, that being said i'm happy just to have a conversation with you just to understand the direction that you're going in my phone number is there uh, my website is there as well dot com not dot com and uh and my email address is there as well in case you want to reach out and um either request any of those slides from me or uh or just have a question again i'm happy to answer through email or phone call um and uh I appreciate you having me here today. I was I was excited to be able to present to uh, to the University of Maryland uh, group that uh, any any group of you of you know UMD is is a is a fun group for me. So thank you for having me here. Thanks so much, Doug. Thank you guys for for joining us today. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time. And uh, it looks like we're gonna uh, give you five minutes here uh, back in your day. So. Uh, again, Doug, thank you so much for joining us today. If you if you need to reach out to Doug um, for slides or just uh, talk about your own personal situation, again, it's Doug at turnkeypodcast.com. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Have a wonderful day, and go Terps.